welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be BSL Season 13 Hasu League Group B. Let's go, Brandon, is in fact Light Swarm, Canadian Zerg, who I have not seen yet somehow. Which surprises me, because usually I'm pretty linked into the North American scene. I'm wondering if Light Swarm went by a different name in the past. Gosifer is going to be our Peruvian Protoss in the bottom right-hand corner. As the uh, creamy white, I don't know what to call that color. It's not exactly white. Close to white. We'll call that close to white white. How about that? Brandon Yelzerg. Uh, this is going to be on Revolver. So one thing with Revolver, I have not seen, I think, as far as the Pro League aspect of BSL play, there's been one Zerg win versus Protoss on this map. It's really tough because there's such a huge interruption of the meta where because of these eggs, because of these ramps, it makes it a little bit more awkward to build your front door, but it makes it a lot harder to execute a potential 973 attack. And without that Hydra bus potential, Protoss feels a lot more comfortable executing certain opening build orders. And as a result with the follow-up, oftentimes ends up with an advantage, I think. And I think that's kind of what's been happening on this map overall. And maybe it's just that Zealots are more runny boys, or it looks like we saw an extractor cancel, which suggests we're gonna see a dedication of early slow Zerglings. Out of Light Swarm on the right, looks like upper right-hand corner was scouted first. Looks like this Overlord is going to scout this probe coming from the right as well. But I will say, though, regardless of that, I enjoy Revolver as a map only because it is interesting and it disrupts, I think, every single matchup in the meta. Every single matchup across the board. Uh, I, in fact, even the mirror matchups, I feel like it disrupts. Overlord being produced. Spawning pool finished. Zerglings on the way. Probe Scout is, in fact, going to spot this. So nine pool allows that additional pressure that's going to force potentially two photon cannons on the front door. Lights, uh, sorry, goes for scouting it right off the bat though. So shouldn't be too disrupted by this, but what this sometimes can allow, well, let's see if this overlord, nope, it's just going to go straight to the main. I was wondering if it was going to sneak out, but what this allows is potentially, I like the Zerglings early because if you can take out that probe scout, you can put your opponent in the dark and play from there and I feel like so much of Zerg versus Protoss these days is about keeping your Protoss opponent at least in the early game uncomfortable as far as what your opening build order is going to be unfortunately okay that's an odd play this the Zerglings going to the upper left did this overlord not realize that maybe just a lack of vision I'm not sure if Light Swarm realized that this base was in fact occupied now moving out to the natural expansion from the rear he's going to see that Nexus Morphing up, okay, N yeah, and just didn't realize, didn't see that probe scout or didn't make the assumption with that probe scout on that corner. Gas being taken around the three minute mark, which is gonna make those mutalisks, if there is a mutalisk follow up, somewhat slower. Zergling hiding behind the extractor for a moment. Looks like we are seeing an additional pair of Zerglings being produced. I don't think, maybe from the south, there's a way to like get behind here and maybe get into the, the main, but that's a lot of space to cover, and I think there should be a Zealot in position to go ahead and cope with that. These Zerglings trying to kill that. This is a lot of Zerglings chasing. Uh, you know, it kind of reminds me, back in the day, there was an old school game called Ragnarok Online, which is a hilarious, it was, it was a really fun game. Uh, I recommend people playing it. But every once in a while, you'd see a guy who was extremely high level. He would just be attacking a bunch of, like, the low level. He'd just be extremely high level. He'd beat up. He'd, he'd just kind of tap. A bunch of the lower level monsters to just get a big horde running around him and you'd be kind of joking around like oh help help and it was just kind of like nope not really this reminds me of that where it's just like the monster swarm chasing the single probe and the probe like yeah just uh casually running out with that bit of information gosifer feeling confident upon seeing that third base gonna go ahead and back off we are seeing a hydralis then so it is going to be three hatch hydra to start I'm wondering if it's going to be a Hydra bust or if it's just going to be a transition into five hatch Hydra Lusk comparatively. I like Hydras as an opener on this map just because there are, there's more ramp. There, there's close, the, the area to traverse in between favors Hydras in my opinion. There's a lot of area to maneuver in the middle of the map here. There's high ground that you can kind of fire down uh, from there and kind of back up and maneuver from. There's these ramps where you can bunch up units and do a lot of Attack from there with your range. Zealot's clogging that front door. Second assimilator being grabbed, which suggests we're going to see a more tech 
faster tech, fewer gateway units uh, style of play from Ghost for one direction or another. Looks like he is going to go ahead and grab that Stargate, which we'll see how that plays out for him. He does have this probe still pocketed to this 3 o'clock location, so he might have been able to, if he snuck around and scouted, gone from there. Still no... Is this going to be a bust? We'll have to see if this ends up being a bust. Again, I don't like busts on this map because it's just smaller surface area to try to deal with this. The cannon a little bit out of position. Two additional cannons being dropped upon seeing those Zerglings reposition. And actually, this probe, kind of that ninja scout, going up and seeing, I think, a Hydralisk additional Zerglings, and it looks like this is going to be a attempt at a 973. Hydra pressure bust, potentially. Let's see if we can get a good count. So there's six, so not exactly precise. We do have, and so we do have nine there. And there's the three, so a couple units short, but this probe finding everything, able to cycle through, see the hydralisks incoming. And so Ghostfur knows that he needs to get additional cans, and you can see him repositioning the zealots to the south. There is still a Corsair being produced, Citadel of a Dune plopping down as well. But these preventative cannons, let's see if that buys enough time. I'd actually expect an, an additional cannon or two seeing those Hydralis pressing forward. This might be a little late. So Corsair there is going to take down that Overlord. Here comes the attempted bust by Light Swarm. Starting to press into this, I think relegating himself to taking out that Forge. Let's see if that Weapons 1 ends up getting cancelled. He Light Swarm in the red at the moment. Can't field additional units until he gets additional overlords out. And that Corsair is going to go ahead and press forward to be annoying along that south ridge, if you can see it past those artifacts. So Forge gone. The Zealot's pressing forward, doing a little bit of damage to these Hydralists on the front. Usually I think you want to wait and keep them back until the cannons are there. But that buys some time for level 1 weapons to finish. This is a huge mistake on Light Swarm's part. Because upgrades can be the difference. And level 1 weapons finishes as that forge still stands. Light Swarm continuing to press forward is able to get... Unfortunately not having a cohesive attack with these Hydralisks. And with being put in the red by that Corsair. And that Corsair doing a lot of damage against these Overlords in the background. I think Gosefer is easily going to take this match. In fact, I would practically call... I'm not going to say like, oh yeah, that was GG from there. But that was a big economic commitment early on. You took out a handful of cannons. You let level 1 weapons finish. You're trying to get additional hatcheries now. Otherwise, but this Corsair is still doing a lot of damage behind this. More Corsair... or Sorry, more Hydralisks being produced. Maybe for a potential contain to follow up. But Zelt Leg Speed, Psystorm on the way, and additional gateways are being placed down. A sizable econom economic lead for Gosefer. But here's round 2 of the Hydralisks pressing forward. And Gosefer actually being a little bit Making a bit of a mistake opening up his eggs a little bit earlier. Now that forge finally be being taken out, but it did its job. Corsair actually sneaking out to the upper left-hand corner, uh, perhaps looking for... I'm not sure the reasoning behind that. Checking for additional expan expansions. Maybe just wants to be brought back to scout later down the line. High Templar in production. Psy Storm Should be there. I think there's enough cannons to defend against the Hydralisks otherwise. But, yeah, as far as a follow-up, let's see if Light Swarm has a counter to this. He's, I think... What he's going to do is he's just going to attempt round two of Hydralisk Bust and play it from there. He hasn't even gone for Lair anywhere that I see. Yeah, it looks like he's just sitting at... He's basically going for Hatch Hydra as far as a follow-up. And just wants to try to get a Bust and catch these cannons before Psystorm finishes. Unfortunately, Psystorm just finished. And it's going to be four seconds before there's Psystorm there. So maybe if he can dodge some Psystorm, he can make this work. Trying to grab a fifth hatch now. That Corsair still sneaking around, seeing the five hatch build. Maybe isn't aware of all these Hydralists, but even if he's not aware, he's got enough Psystorm to really punish these Hydralists behind this. And again, this is a very awkward front to try to engage. The Zealots also have leg speed and level 1 weapons behind this. Psystorm touching a bit of that first Zealot, and Lightswarm not even dedicating, maybe just trying to bait out some of those Psystorms. Lightswarm regrouping with the rest of these Hydralists. Now keep in mind, this was a bunch of Hydralists that are not drones. And additional gateways are being produced. Some zealots being filled in. I don't think there's an opportunity for a hydralisk contain at this stage of things. Lurker tech is a long ways off, so it's just going to be down to these hydralisks. Pushing through, trying to peck away at that high templar. 
absorbing another Psy Storm, but there's plenty of additional High Templar. So I think the window of opportunity has closed. Goes for it twice the supply of Light Swarm at this stage. The Corsair is still cycling around, checking everything out. I think it's just looking to see, okay, are these in fact Hydralisks that are being produced? and sh Or should I start moving out with this attack force? He's produced a sizable amount of Zealots behind this. Which actually might be able to just go... Honestly, with these Zealots and with the attack force difference and enough Psystrom behind this... I wouldn't recommend actually doing this, but I do feel like what Light Storm could actually do, or say what Ghostfire could actually do, is exit with these Zealots and maybe do an end around to pin these Hydralisks in. Uh, sneak up to the north. It looks like Light Swarm realizing that, so he's going to go ahead and camp some Hydralisks. But basically what we're waiting for is for Light Swarm to feel like, okay, I've got a sufficient enough attack force that I'm going to engage this, but this is Psystorm bait. Look at that Psystorm. Oh, just obliterating a lot of those Hydralisks. The Zealot's happy with that. Going to go ahead and back off. The Hydral's re-engaging, trying to peck at this. But honestly, this kind of feels like poking a like poking a beehive with a stick. Although this beehive is shocking. Bad pun. It wasn't even... Was that, does that even count as a pun? I'm not even sure. Corsair's, uh, Corsair's still alive, so it can go ahead and continue with the scouting information. It doesn't look like Light Swarm has a, an additional plan behind this. He's just sticking with five hatch and just wants to try to overwhelm with the with the Hydralisks. It looks like a three o'clock base is being snuck. So there's no contain as well. Plenty of size storm. And it's going to be a moment before, honestly, Gosefer has a si sizable enough attack for us where maybe he can just run through what's there. He is starting to open things up a little bit. Hydralisks with the giant just kind of walking up like, hey, what's up, big fire dude? And eating a bit of flame in the face. Gosefer... Uh, lucky for Light Swarm, Ghost for having a little bit of trouble keeping his uh, army cohesive. Some Dragoons have grouped up. He doesn't even need a Robotics here. Still might opt to go for it. Big upgrade advantage, level 2 weapons, level 1 armor as well. So now Light Swarm has an inferior army as far as upgrades go. Size, basically nothing in his favor. Doesn't even need to expend Size Storms here. The Zelts can clean this up, and there, there's GG from Light Swarm. So, nice attempt. Again, still haven't, uh, as far as like personally being able to see a match, I have not seen Zerg win uh, to start off on this match. But I'm going to give a quick shout out to Zachram, who was able to get me the replay on Discord. I'm going to check out the other side of the bracket. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thanks for listening.